All right, guys. Hello. Just wanted to uh, kind of touch base again today. Um, I wanted to talk a few things about <clears throat> why I may be saying some of the things that I'm saying and, and believe in what I'm believing. Um, when you look in the scripture, the Bible said, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Um, and the other day it talked about uh, search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. And just just wanted to go through some things here, um, you know, looking at the, the old laws, Torah. Um, but the new law, Jesus came um, and he said, lo, the first is taken away to be established by the second. Um, that's in your Bible. It's in the New Testament. Um, and it's in Hebrews, I think, around 10, chapter 10. Um, so I wanted to kind of explain some of the some of the reasoning and, and what I feel in the Holy Ghost um, that, that has been showing me, revealing some things to me. And, and you know, if you if you want to if you want to confirm, you want to make sure that you're going to heaven, you believe in the right thing. Um, one, you have to believe. I mean, you believe in something. You, you think that this life is just it. Um, then I guess there's really no hope beyond the grave for you. Um, I choose to believe in the Bible. Why do I choose to believe in the Bible? I was told about Jesus. I repented. Uh, I took the steps to repent and, 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 and with a sorrowful heart. And I got baptized and, and filled with the Holy Ghost. And that evidence of speaking in tongues came upon me, the power of God. I had a physical and spiritual transformation. So... I know in whom I have believed and I'm persuaded uh, that he is able. Uh, I obeyed the word. I had a miracle happen in my life. Um, that's, that's really why I believe. If I had none of that, I have no proof. Um, but it worked for me. Um, he, he did what I read he would do. Um, so that's why I believe. That's why I know this is, this is true. Um, now, one of the things I, I want, you know, when I read scripture and some things don't make sense, um, I have to look at that. I have to uh, reach out. James, I believe it said, if you, if you lack wisdom, ask God who giveth liberally and upbraideth not, uh, he will show you. And in and, and, and the Holy Ghost, uh, we talked about discerns the heart and the, uh, the mind and uh, it's a discerner of the heart. Uh, and the mind uh, so yea the deep things of God so when you when you understand or, or know this knowledge of the word you you apply it in your life and you see that it works for you you see that it works with you the Holy Ghost amen so that's why it's very important to have the Holy Ghost he said it will lead and guide you into all truth and righteousness um, is there things, do we know all things? No, we don't. We're not going to. Um, I, I don't believe those things are, are that important. Um, if you get to a point where you need to know something and it's, it's, it's bothering you, I believe God will, will help satisfy uh, whatever that knowledge gap is for you. Um, I have been studying. I've been, the Lord has been showing me and in, 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 in um, this whole year and, and even before that, um, and it's not doubting uh, scripture. It's not uh, lacking faith. That's you. You can you can have faith in false stuff all you want. It doesn't. It will never make it true. Understand? That's that's not what faith is. Faith is applying in believing Jesus, who did exist, <laughs> um, and and knowing that He is able. He is uh, our, our propitiation or our. Um, sacrifice for our sins to bring us back to God and, and and so when you understand that so when you when you see John uh 3 you know 316 for God so loved the world but if you go to the beginning of that chapter John 3 1 through 8 you'll see Jesus talking to Nicodemus and you'll see that he said you must be born again of the water and of the spirit to not only see but to enter the kingdom of God well that sparks my attention. What do I got to do to be saved? And Jesus himself <laughs> said, I must be born again of the water and of the spirit. 
Um, I have to find that. I have to be able to make sense of that. I have to know what do I need to do. And when you read and, and he talks to Peter and he said, thou art Peter. And upon this rock, he said, who, who do other men say that I am? And Peter says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. You're the sacrifice. You're the atonement for our sins. And, and Jesus said, you have not been given this by flesh, but my father revealed it unto you through the spirit. Um, and, and, and Jesus said, thou art Peter. And upon this rock, upon your understanding of who I am, not you, Peter, but upon your understanding of who I am, I will build my church. Okay, what did he mean by that? He, he is going to build the faith. What is the church in what Jesus is talking about was not a physical church. And, and you say, well, how do you know that? I say, well, because when the temple, when they showed him the temple and Jesus said, not one, one stone is going to be left on another. And that happened in AD 70. All that temple was tore down. So Jesus wasn't talking about a, a physical church. He's talking about a spiritual church. Amen. A, a group of believers throughout time until he comes again. Amen. So when, when you look at that, you, you say, okay, well, Peter's upon that rock, upon that rock. And he said that, that Jesus uh, was the chief cornerstone. He picked the apostles, 12 apostles. And he, to lay that foundation. So, so we got to be careful. There was only 12 apostles. Um, and, and we find this backed up in Revelation where we see that the, the, he said there'd be 12 names on the gates, um, the apostles' names. So when you look at that, you see, see a connection. And one of the things I, I did want to uh, bring out here this morning is the book of Deuteronomy, and I don't know if I have that real quick. Um, I think I may have pulled it up. Let me check. Yeah, the book of Deuteronomy 19 and 15 uh, says, One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin in any sin that he sinneth at the mouth of two witnesses or the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. So the reason I'm bringing that up, because it is it is quoted back into the New Testament, again, um, talking about two immutable things, um, and you can look that up yourself, but let every word be established. And so by using that rule, um, and, and this is why I'm going to go to where I'm going to go to Matthew. So, so back to the the salvation how you're going to be born again of the water and of the spirit so let, let's go back a little bit and let's let's continue on with that vein of thought and then we'll come back to where i was just getting ready to run off to um but anyhow when you look at that the the lord told them that he was with them now he would leave but he would come back in in the spirit he would be in them not just with them and and he said tarry ye in, in jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. And we find that in the book of Acts, second chapter, uh, where they were in Jerusalem, uh, in the upper room, it says. Um, and when you look, you see that um, uh, Mary's house uh, was, was uh, considered the first church. And it's a house. It's not a, it's not a temple. It's not a building. It's not what the disciples told them. So a lot of folks want to, you know, we've got today's is, is called churches and we got buildings and, you know, everybody, um, you know, I'm not going to get into that today, but whatever that, that there, those were houses. And, uh, so anyhow, I just noted that we can, we can talk about that later and some other uh, thing. But the, the, the point is, is that Peter, that same thing, Jesus told him, whatsoever he binds on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever he, he, he looses on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So Jesus was giving Peter that authority for that moment when that came. And so when they were all with one accord, the Bible said, one mind, one accord in the upper room, uh, uh, so the, the, the spirit came on like as a fire it set up on each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And there was about 120 of them that day 
Um, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. Uh, so they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Um, and so when, when the, the Acts 2, chapter 2, when, when these were, when it said that noised abroad and those were gathered together, and, and they saw this and they said that these are drunken, and uh, they're, they're, they've heard them speak in other tongues, and, and those outside that didn't believe were, were mocking, the Bible says. And Peter stood up with the 11 and, and said, this is not as you suppose, they're not drunken like you think they are, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And, and in the last days, the Lord will pour out of his spirit. Amen, your, your young men shall dream dreams, your old men, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall prophesy or uh, see visions. And, and upon his handmaidens, uh, they will they will um, prophesy as well. So um, a whole lot of things were changing here. The old law, um, women didn't speak, but yet Joel says that in the last days, women would now prophesy. So there's a lot of things going on here, a lot of changes being made uh, because Jesus had passed away and, and, and came back and was risen again. And he said, that's when the Holy Ghost will come. That's the Holy Ghost. This was new. He said a new and living way. He said the old law, the low, uh, take away the first to establish the second. Now, taking away means just that. Uh, people say we still have part of the old law. We still have to, that's no. You go to Acts 15, read, the, read through there. You'll see James uh, basically says, hey, we never commanded anyone to stay with the old law. We didn't. We don't teach that. We are not teaching that. We're not telling you that you have to observe the old law. Boom, um, and and you don't have to be circumcised. Um, so that was what. After they went to the council, that's what they were told. Um, the Gentiles, because uh, the, there were some that were of the sect of Pharisees and wanted them to be circumcised because they were circumcised and wanted to force that on the Gentiles even after the Lord had already given them the Holy Ghost. Um, and uh, they received it the same as everybody else were baptized in Jesus' name. Uh, so these things were changing. Uh, when you look in the book of Acts, you're seeing um, what these guys are struggling with. These are not commandments in, in many areas. This is not commanding. And, 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 and men, organizations are pulling things out of these, these scriptures and making them commandments. Oh yeah, well I'm teaching this because well that's what they did. Um, and I used to teach the same things. Um, we used to say, hey, the, the, we're doing this because it's the actions of the apostles. Well, you know, when you start reading in there and you see Acts 15, and I, I use that for a big example because there was a lot of turmoil through there. Um, and you can see them trying to work this out. There was the, um, the sect of Pharisees. Uh, they were apostles. They were, or they were disciples, um, the same level. They received the Holy Ghost. They were part of the ministry. Uh, they were the Book of Acts church, so to speak. Um, and so they were claiming that they had to be circumcised. Um, and there was contention there. And they, they finally said, you know, hey, no. And even Peter was, was talking about the, you know, hey, when I went, God said, don't call what I cleaned unclean. So they weren't circumcised to be clean. The Lord made them clean. So you're seeing a dynamic change from the old law, which had to go by ordinances and the law of the letter. And Jesus said that the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. And Jesus kept telling them and teaching them about the spirit. The Holy Ghost is going to come. He will teach you all things. He will bring to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. He will testify of me, Jesus said. So he's going to lift me up, the Holy Ghost, when he's come. And, and this is what they received in that that. Uh, evidence of speaking in tongues. And, and you say, well, how do, where do you get that from Jesus? Well, if you read 1 and 8, 1 through 8 in John, you'll see that Jesus said you'll hear a sound, okay? And, and these, these are hints of what was going to happen. Now understand, Jesus was still under the law. He was still under the law, so he spoke within the law, but he was prophesying in that what was coming after his death, because the Bible said that while the testator is still living, the testament is not in force. You know, just like 
somebody has a will, it's not invoked until after they die. They're not going to give you their house while they're living in it. They have to die for it to be come into effect. And the Bible teaches that. Uh, so when you look at all that stuff, you're, you're seeing these things roll out. But you're also seeing where the rubber is starting to hit the road. The, the apostles, the disciples, are, are trying to figure things out. Now, um, a lot of these things, and that, that's, I'm, I'm saying all this, that, that these things are confirmed. They're tied in with what Jesus taught. And, and, and those things can be solid. Um, so those things where Jesus said, my word will judge you in the last day. And, and so in the last day, I'm going to be judged by the red letter words of Jesus. Now, I want to go back and I want to say, okay, well, where do I, where am I, where do is my assurances of things? And this is where I'm, I'm going to kind of, kind of help you understand what the Lord has been showing me. And I'm not all knowing yet. I'm still working on figuring this out too through the Holy Ghost. Um, but what I'm teaching is what I have been shown by the Lord. And, and I feel comfortable in, in the sense that I'm going to meet him one day and I'm okay with this. I, I don't think that I'm wrong. I'm, I'm going to, uh, he's showing me the Holy Ghost and, and through his word and I'm seeing it. And even the, where I see things that are like not really jiving together, uh, I'm going further. I'm saying, okay, well, who wrote this? What was the time frame? God, I need to know these things. I want to be able to be right. I want to be righteous before him when I meet him. Amen. I don't want to be judged to hell because I didn't do my due diligence to seek him. And, and God has given me assignment to, to look into these things and to teach you who, who uh, may be getting taught things that are not uh, correct or kosher, uh, so to speak. Um, so I just want to bring this to you this morning. And, and I'm, I'm just, that's what I'm doing. So let's now go to Matthew. Um, this, is, this is where I have a big problem with churches today. When I go to Matthew 20 and I look at 25 and, and, and 26, and I just want to go through this. It, what, let me set the scene here. This is uh, mother of James and John came to Jesus and said, hey, I want you to grant my two sons to be on your left and right hand when, when they go to heaven. Uh, I want them to be on the left and right hand of power of you. And, and Jesus says, it's not mine to give. And, you know, but, but, but the main, main two scriptures that I want to focus on, and this is the story for this, and this is Jesus' answer. And it says, verse 25 said, but Jesus called them unto him and said, ye know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them. And they that are great exercise authority upon them. Um, that's verse 25. 26, he said, but it shall not be so among you. So again, we see that the Lord said, you're not going to do it that way. That's, that's pretty clear. Um, and he said, but whoso will be great among you, let him be your minister. Um, and whoso will be chief among you, let him be your servant. And that's verse 27, 28. And he went on to say, even as the son of man came not to be ministered to, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. As God, amen, he came to be servant rather than who he was. Um, and he said, if you, you don't deny yourself and follow me, you can't be any part of me. And that's what he told Peter as well. Um, and that's what he taught the disciples. So we know that we have to pick up our cross and follow him. And he said, if you love father, mother, sister, brother, it's scripture that we, if, if we love any of those things more than him, we cannot be his disciple. Um, the Bible said, no flesh shall glory. So knowing these, these, um, he said, you can't love the world and love me also. You, you can't serve the world. Uh, any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So if you love mother, brother, father, sister um, more than me, you cannot be my disciples. That's, that's what Jesus said. Um, so back to this, we look at, and he said that, that 
the princes of the Gentiles exercise authority over them. Like boss, like hierarchy. This is this is what he's talking about. Hierarchy. We're talking about, hey, can my two sons be sitting on each side of you? And the Lord said, we're not playing that here. I'm not going to elevate anyone here above the other. And if you don't get that out of this passage, um, I don't know what to tell you. Um, that's what it means. And then so when we look, and, and again, you look at, um, we're going to go to Luke. Um, and when we go to Luke here, we're going to go to 22, chapter 22. And again, which is amazing to me, 25 and 26 again. Same subject, but it's the same verses, just a different chapter in another book. Um, and again, here we are. Remember the two immutable things? This is the follow-up and the confirmation. Well, this is two different books, two different conversations, similar topic, but different. You had the mom wanting her sons to sit in heaven on his left and right side. Now when we come here to Luke 22, um, and we start at verse 23, and they began to inquire among themselves which of them it was that should do this thing. And there was also a strife among them, verse 24, which of them should be accounted the greatest. All right. And in verse 25, and he said unto them, this is Jesus now entering this conversation here. Uh, he said, the kings of the Gentiles, of the unbelievers, the heathen, uh, exercise lordship over them. Okay. And they that exercise authority upon them, they are called benefactors. So they're the bosses. They have more privilege. Understand that? Benefactors. They have more privilege. Here we go. They're, they're talking among themselves who should be counted the greatest, who's going to be above each other, this hierarchy, okay? So here, here's the dilemma. It's not a dilemma until you go and look at our churches today of what they've done, okay, and where they got it from. So anyhow, we go back here. Reading on, he said they were called benefactors. He said, verse 26 but ye shall not be so. But he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is chief, as he that doth serve. And then he goes on again, talking about uh, he that setteth that meat is greater than the servant. Who's the servant? He's talking about you go to the restaurant, and I'm just going to put it to today. Uh, you go to the restaurant, you're setting at a meal, you're considered the master. The person serving you is is the servant, so you're 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 calling the shots. He said that's going to be flipped in the kingdom, and what he's doing is 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 giving you a mentality of of what to think, um, and it, it's not just mentality, but it is physical. He is telling them in these two passages, two books, two distinct books, two distinct writers. Now. Um, these are called the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. John is an exception to those. Um, however, when you look into the history of, of the writers of the books, and it's very bleak of who wrote what um, these days, um, in, in all their ways, they've, they've attributed things, but there's really no concrete evidence. Um, but anyhow, my point here is Matthew was written after time-wise, Mark. Um, and and Mark, Matthew was is told to have, the writer of Matthew is told to have used parts of Mark to create Matthew, okay? So when you look at that, those two are a little linked. So if we were looking at uh, Matthew and Mark, you could say, well, maybe they pulled that out of there. And, 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 and now we, we don't really have that solid uh, Deuteronomy 19 and 15 uh, by two immutable things. But because there is a, a better space and difference in, in, in history writing, 
Um, I feel comfortable with that because one's in Luke and one's in Matthew, and, and they're not the tie-in of, of what they say in history. So that I'm pretty confident in. Um, so with that, um, we, we look at 1 Peter. Let's go to 1 Peter uh, 5, talking about uh, feed the flock of God. When you say feed the flock of God, what does that mean? This is, this is and, and let me tell you, what, where we're going here with this is Jesus said you're not going to have hierarchy in the church, not in his kingdom. Um, and that don't mean it's a heavenly or spiritual thing. It is physically because he just said it here. Um, and so the point I'm trying to make is now you have first Peter, you talk about and what, where we're going with this. What I'm trying to bring out to you today is the fact that churches are ran. You've got a pastor He's the head, he's, he, you know, and, and, and they are preaching today that you got to go through a pastor to get to God, which is, which is false, false teaching. Um, uh, I, I call it antichrist because you are saying that um, Jesus coming and offering you the Holy Ghost, and it being your teacher, now you're going back to the old law. You're going back across the law of grace. The law came by Moses, but truth and grace came by Jesus Christ. You're, you're taking Jesus back out of the equation and take, picking up the old law saying, I got to go through man now. When Jesus abolished that, that, that curtain, that partition to the holiest of holies was rent in two. Um, and, and we talked about this on our last, last uh, talk. But anyhow, that's written too. That's, that's no longer. That's, that's gone. In what the law was weak could not remove sin. We don't want to be in that old law. And you're not going to be able to cross it without offending Jesus Christ because he came to replace it. Lo, I come to take away the first to establish the second. Um, that's in your Bible. There's more than one, one, one instance telling us that story, um, when, that word. So I believe it. That's what it is. That that makes most sense to me. That's the that's the promise in the garden. That's the the prophets had prophesied the Messiah to come. This is what he come to do. He's not going to share his glory with man. Moses, um, as great as some of these prophets that that work that God used, uh, they're still not God. They're not Jesus. Um, he alone. All right. So when you look here in in First Peter five talking about feed the flock of God, he's not talking pastoral. He's not talking here, um, here's, here's now we're going to institute this above you. It's not going to go back against um, Luke 22, 25, and 26. It's not going to go against what Jesus said in Matthew 20, 25, and 26. That would directly violate what Jesus said to do and what we're not doing in the kingdom. All right. Now, many, they may want to make this spiritual what Jesus said. No, well, this is the natural. No, no, it doesn't work that way. That is not even the spirit of Jesus. All right. Jesus didn't even, didn't even operate in that type of a spirit. He did not put one above the other. The Bible actually says there's no respect to persons with God. James talks about it. If you see one come in, if you have respect to persons, you commit sin. So we, we have so many areas that tells us that that's not, that's not happening for God. All right? So that's not pleasing to God. We know that. Uh, and, and so when you look here, feed the flock of God. So these are some of the things that they use to, to justify a hierarchical, a level set in churches. Uh, this is where they they use um, they talk in, in 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 the apostles the 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 ministry they they want to divide the ministry from the saints you you have the commoners but you got the high lofty ministry and and that's where they're doing that that is wrong that that goes against what we read this morning that is against what Jesus said. We don't have one. The Bible said, and even Paul, the people that they base this stuff off of, the, the writings of, of, of Peter, it's not Peter. Peter didn't write this book, by the way. 
Um, but where it says Peter 5, 1 Peter 5 is talking feed the flock of God and where they pull some of this stuff from to justify these levels of hierarchy. They're talking bishops and, and, and deacons and things like that. Well, you know what? That goes against what Jesus said. And if Jesus' words are going to judge me in the last day, and, and, and some of these books, and I'm, I'm not throwing shadow, and I, I know it's a very fine line here. I'm not throwing shadow on the word. Um, I, I truly believe the word. But I'm telling you, not everything in here um, was done right. All you got to do is read Acts 15. You'll see that they, they were like very staunch arguing that these Gentiles need to be circumcised. If they're going to be part of God and they're going to be part of us, they got to be circumcised. There was contention there. So outside of Acts 15, you see that Paul um, charged Peter that, hey, you know, when you're around the Jews, you act like you don't... Your 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 Gentiles are nobody, but when you're when you're not, you're acting like. So he's he's saying you're being partial to the Gentiles when you're around the Jews. Uh, he charged him with fault on that. So so don't tell me that everything that's there we got to do. It's for education. It's for understanding, figuring things out. The main thing is what Jesus said and what the Holy Ghost that lives in you connects with, connects you with, leads you to truth. And that is what the number one thing is that's going to bring us to heaven and keep us in communion with God. So I just want you to know that you have to lean on the Holy Ghost bound by the word of truth. And the Holy Ghost will confirm those things for you. All right. So when you look at those two scriptures, and, and I say that they, they, they meet the qualifications of Deuteronomy 19 and 15. They meet that standard. And, and so when I read and say, feed the flock of God, that doesn't set you above. Jesus said ye are all brethren. Read Matthew 20. Read Matthew 6. Read those scriptures in there. You'll see when Jesus is talking to, to the, about the or charging the scribes and Pharisees. And, and, and talking, teaching the disciples. He said, ye are all brethren. He's not just talking to them because John 17 and 20 said, neither pray I for these alone, but for all them who believe on me through their word. So Jesus was extending that teaching to everyone that comes forward by the gospel. Now, the other thing I'm not gonna go much into, but, but, but the gospel is what we're commissioned to preach. Beyond the gospel, getting people to know Jesus, how shall they know except there be a preacher, a man testifying and preaching the good news about Jesus, bringing them to Christ? That's it. Because once they receive the Holy Ghost, once they obey the salvation plan that Jesus laid out in John 3, 1 through 8, where it was backed up by Peter, Acts 2, 38, and once we do that and we have received the Holy Ghost, we have become the sons of God and we can be led by his spirit. At that point, we have no one above us. We have direct access to Jesus, to God by Jesus Christ, who is the face of Jesus Christ. That's how we connect and have communion with God. There's no counselor in a pastor's office we go to to have salvation. Okay, that's that's forbidden. That's 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 non-biblical. Okay, um, I'm just going to touch on a few things. I have I have precedent. I have scripture. Um, I have lack of scripture for the supporting churches today. Where do you get an altar in a in a in a in a, in a church today? You don't. There's no need for an altar because Jesus was that final sacrifice for those believers. There's no sacrifice. What is the sacrifice unto God? It's the praise, the, your lips, a clean heart. Those are the sacrifices that he looks for. All right. So uh, well, that's that's another another lesson. But um, when you go looking into some of these things, and when you look at Hebrew, nobody knows who wrote the book of Hebrews. Um, it, it's later attributed to Paul. Um, 
And this is where we find some of the some of the big things that these these churches go by. Again, against what Jesus said. It says, Obey them that have the rule over you. And and then the, where they must give an account for your souls. <laughs> that is that is on its face against everything Jesus taught. I cannot pick that up. I cannot put trust in that. And 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 I will not. Because it violates what Jesus said here. It violates the very spirit by what Jesus came and did of our accounts of Jesus. So when, when that is said, that I have to come to man, they're pulling that old law back across the grace line. So I'm not going to do that. It's unbiblical. It does not match. It does not, it does not pass muster of the Deuteronomy 19 and 15. Amen. Again, you've got to lean to the Holy Ghost. You've got to know that Jesus, he said, my sheep know my voice. All right. Um, and there is so much more that we could go into. Um, I, I'm just going to gonna kind of close out here. Um, it's some thought for you. It's some prayer. It's some seeking God. Um, again, um, I, I could go through and, 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 and talk much more in depth on some of these things. Um, you know, but I, I'm not going to take that time here. If you'd like to reach out to me, you know, you, you, you more than welcome to. Um, as far as the writings of the books of, of, of the 27 books in the New Testament, uh, nine, nine authors, supposedly, um, I say that because, and, and just, just give you a little bit here, the, the scriptures, these books weren't written until later, like in 30 AD, um, and so up until then, this was orally passed around these these uh, multiple generations of, of of the stories i call them stories because it's just the way it's written um of the history of jesus who he was what he did were, were kept alive by by people telling one another telling their children and then later on um there arose writers and began to pen this stuff um uh, from from the stories that they heard and this is what is believed today um, now, does that make it of anything less? Um, I believe that inspiration, I believe God has preserved. I do believe um, in, in these things, and I believe it's all for a purpose. Um, so when, when they're talking, feed the flock of God, uh, maybe that writer, uh, 1 Peter, was not written by Peter. Um, it is supposedly written by a couple of disciples of Paul. Um, Paul and Peter history wise they say that they they were kind of close uh so when you start bringing knowledge and, and history and, and and try to tie some of this together and i said in the in, in the initial um start of this our talk here is that this worked for me so if I only had, and then there's so many negative things about the Bible, and they're like, oh, it's just a story, blah, 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 and there's no credibility. You've got that whole negative side, too, when you go researching some of this stuff. As people just say, it's just, it's just a good story, whatever, and it, it's, you know, um, I'm not, I, I, there's so many things I, I could say. Um, but my point is, is that what do you, it works. It worked for me. I felt the Lord. I had changes. So <laughs> there's something to it. It's not false. Um, but you have to rightly divide the word. Amen. When, and again, when you go study Acts 15, if you were to say, oh, well, this guy's a disciple. I got to listen to him. I got to go get circumcised. Well, no. Within that same chapter, you see that they went to council. They, they talked and, 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 and amongst each other. And, and they're like, no. And, and, and even James said, we couldn't even keep the old law. And our fathers couldn't even keep the old law. Why would we try to put it on the Gentiles? So when you look at these things and you start looking, it's like, oh, well, I would go get circumcised. Oh, well, I found out I don't have to get circumcised. So if you started out in the book of Acts 15 and you said, oh, I got to do what the word says. And I went and got circumcised if I weren't. Um, and, and 
then I would come back and say, oh, man, I didn't even need to get circumcised. Well, that, that would be kind of silly, right? So what I'm trying to tell you is that there are items in here for our learning and understanding that you can have some disagreements and you work them out. It showed how they did and how they worked things out. And not everything got worked out. So my point is, is that you can't take it literal. That's why God gave us the Holy Ghost to discern. And, and, and he said that, that he would lead and guide us to all truth. So a lot of these things for our understanding, not actual commandments. But men take these as commandments. They read them to you in scripture. They mix them around. They create organizations. They create hierarchy because they can, they can point to scripture and as long as you're not a studious person and you don't go for it and they can sit there and tell you, well, how shall they preach except they be sent? We're sent from God and this is what the Bible says and you got to listen to us and, oh, you got to obey them to have the rule over you. That's all the scripture you're given. You're not understanding the whole concept and, and reading Matthew 22 or Matthew 20, 25 and 26 and, and going to Luke 22, 25 and 26 and understanding that that ain't the way the kingdom of God works. You're going in man's tradition. You are now finding yourself in Matthew 23 with the scribes and Pharisees who is telling you what to do. You are now serving man and not the word in spirit of God. And that's what I'm trying to bring out to folks that you have got to understand. You cannot serve man. Some are in jeopardy of idolatry. Some are in jeopardy of, of adultery. If you feel you're the bride of Christ and you've got someone else telling you what to do outside of your head, which is Christ, you are committing adultery. And then you cannot do that. You cannot have idols, nothing before you and God. And if you feel that that man is your covering, there's nowhere in the scripture on this side of grace in the new covenant that any man can be your covering. And if they're going off of, uh, they must give an account and obey them that have a rule over you, that's a very slim and skinny and on itself, by itself, does not muster Deuteronomy 19 and 15 and definitely is against the words of Jesus Christ. You want to do that. You want to lay, lay on that. You want to take that before judgment. That's up to you. That's between you and your eternity. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do and demand. The Bible tells us, and, 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 and let's, let's go to 1 John, and I, I brought this up the last time. 1 John um, 2, 20, 26 and 27 says, These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, and this is beyond salvation coming to the knowledge of the truth for Jesus to get baptized and get his Holy Ghost, right? Get the spirit in you. Now Jesus takes over, right? Because Jesus gave to man the extension of him to preach the gospel. What is the gospel? It's the good news of who Jesus is, what he can do to you, how to be saved. Once you're there, you've got the Holy Ghost. Now you are led and guided by the Holy Ghost, by the word of God. Now, what's it say? And ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, not some, not this category, that core category, but all things, and is truth and is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Not a man, not a pastor. I'm only picking on pastors because they have a lot of weight over a lot of people that are falsely brought under their care, which is only natural and it's false, it's unbiblical, my friend. And, and when you go to Ephesians talking about the fivefold ministry, they, they want to put that in there. But again, it does not pass the muster of Deuteronomy 19.15 and it goes against Matthew and Luke. You had the apostles, the prophets, the teachers, the, the, the evangelists, and pastors. These, it says, for the perfecting of the saints. Okay? You can be any one of those. 
The disciples were teaching who? Jesus. So the apostles was teaching Jesus. There's no apostles today. There's 12. They're going to be in heaven in, in the in the on the on the gates, the 12 gates. That's 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 solid. That shows in Revelation. There's not going to be what these people call their their bishops, apostles and all that they want to uh, assign themselves with uh doctors, physicians and all this stuff. They're not going to be there. That's they're not going to have that. Read Matthew and Luke again. Go back to that over and over again. That that should be your check. Your check and balance to what you're being taught. And and when you look at that, the 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 apostles were to lay a foundation. Once that foundation is laid, it's all built on that. We all Whoever has the Holy Ghost, whoever has come to Jesus, are teachers. We, 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 we do pastor a, a, a people that we witness to. But once they got the Holy Ghost, we don't, we don't stay over them. We're not their ruler. We're not like the, the Gentiles, like Jesus said we wouldn't be. So when you look at that, we go to the point where we are brothers and sisters in the Lord. We help each other. We, we watch after each other. Uh, said so if you see a brother or sister destitute, you help them. That's who we become then. We become family of God, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Amen. So that's who we are. We do help each other. We do teach each other. That's what we do. But we're not above one another. That violates Matthew and Luke that we talked about. If you go with that, you're wrong. These churches are wrong. Uh, again, and I'm just going to touch on it. I'm not going into it, but tithing. It's, it's non-biblical, old law, and only for specific people in the old law, and it had nothing to do with monetary. No money was ever exchanged unless you had a long trip to go. You could sell off your, your uh, stock or whatever, your cattle or who, whatever you had, lambs, uh, so you didn't have to drag them for... 100 miles. So that was the only only exceptions. And this was for Levitical priesthoods. Uh, and they've tried to, to twist the scripture to make it all oh, the pastor. He's, he's watching the flock of God and he's, he's, you got to obey him. He's over you. This, this is bringing old law back. We don't have a priest. You know who our priest is? Jesus. He's the only covering. His blood is our covering. That's it. So I just want to tell you that you have got to look into this. I'm presenting to you what God has been showing me and how I have been enlightened by the Holy Ghost and by the Word and why I believe what I'm and why I'm teaching and preaching what I'm teaching and preaching. Because this is what I see. This is what God has shown me. And God has assigned me to tell you about it. And I know I'm ruffling feathers and I know that people uh, get upset. They don't want to change. They, they feel comfortable having a man that they can, they can push things to and then they can consult because that's that. But you have, to, you have to pray. You have to seek God. You have to seek the Holy Ghost. You have to walk in him. You have to commune with Jesus. That is our way to heaven. And, and we can't be outside of that. Amen. So I hope that I've helped someone. And, and, and I'm just going to leave off here. But... If you have questions, I, I, will, I will try my best. I don't have all the answers. But as God shows me things, I am going to do those things. I am going to teach those things. So God bless you. Pray for me until we all come into the knowledge of the faith and unity of the faith. And, and, and God helps us all. Uh, but anyhow, thank you for listening. I appreciate it.